Hi there, this is Bob Martin with the Nautilus Dry Docks and rcsub.com. In this uh, video blog, I wanted to take the opportunity to introduce you to the new EFX Nautilus model. And this is done in uh, approximately 1 44th scale. Uh, behind this particular version, which I was fortunate enough to have a, a good customer of mine send me, uh, you can see the custom replicas, 66 inch version in 1 32nd scale. So you can see the the size differential between the two models. This EFX uh, model is a limited production version. Uh, it's manufactured in China, but as such, I can tell you that the craftsmanship is extremely good with that taken into consideration. It's a beautiful little model. I hope to introduce it to you a little bit here uh, and also show you some exciting things that I hope to do to this model to make it just a little bit better. I'm going to start here at the uh, front of the model and we'll work our way backwards. Um, the finish on the hull is actually a dark silver which works out really really well for the finish that I'm going to be applying to the boat to make it just a little bit more realistic. This is actually uh, a very clever way of doing things. The raker arch is removable as is the forward hatch and the entire wheelhouse. Now you can also see there's a removable piece here that conceals the stairway leading down into the boat. Underneath is the battery compartment and the contacts that provide the wheelhouse with power for the LED lights. Moving backwards here you can see the upper hatch conceals the on off switch for the lights. You got a removable skip and a spinning propeller. The rudder is also positionable. Now here I'm going to turn the lights for the model on and you can catch a glimpse, although I'm sure it's difficult with those lights shining in the lens, of the interior. You can see the specimen table, couches, bookshelves, it's an absolutely beautiful interior with lots of detail. And the only complaint that I have is this very funky looking couch, which is very much not authentic to the movie. Uh, it's a very strange departure in an otherwise very accurate model. Up in the wheelhouse, you can see some terrific detail, all the brass railing, depth tubes, uh, a very detailed grill work on the floor, spiral staircase. Again, another interesting feature, they did not make the alligator eyes functional, which is uh, an interesting feature. What I'm going to be doing to this particular model is uh, weathering it up a little bit, get rid of this uh, straight flat finish that's all over the boat. I am going to work on getting some of these hatches to fit a little bit better. You can see that the, uh, the rear dorsal hatch has a little bit of play in it, uh, a few gaps which isn't uh, very cool at all. And I'm also going to play around with removing this um, uh, salon dome, getting inside the model and replacing that funky looking couch with something a little bit more movie accurate. All right, I've got some excellent news. I've got the funky looking couch outside. Um, it was simply glued in. I'll take you a quick look here. Fortunately, the, uh, the basil that was designed to protect the glass hemisphere here popped off with a little bit of gentle persuasion from these needle nose pliers. And the uh, clear dome, uh, which actually you can see is quite dirty, um, was not even secured. So it just came right free. You can see that what I've got in there now is a nice empty canvas to try and fill up with something a little bit more accurate. All right, as I said, the couch has been removed. And now I'm going to show you the difference between the two. This is the original couch that came with the uh, EFX model and this is actually uh, a one 
69th scale couch that I sculpted uh, myself quickly for the smaller uh, 69th scale 31 inch models uh, that I sell. As you can see there is a you know a bit of a size difference but not very much considering that the models are you know quite a bit different so I grabbed this out of the box here, cleaned it up a little bit, we're gonna throw it inside and see how it fits. Now as you can see it, it fits like a glove. Um, actually the edges of the couch match up perfectly with the edges of the stairs. From out here it's a much more authentic looking couch that matches up with the movie a lot better. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to paint this up, glue it in place, and we will be set to move on to some other areas. Here are a couple more small things I was working on here. This forward hatch is actually magnetically clamped down. There's a magnet in the bottom and in here. Now what we were seeing was that the uh, the bulb in the bottom there was just too big and it wasn't allowing it to lay flat. I ground that down, you can actually see the magnet in there now. When you drop that in, it's a perfectly flush, tight fit now. Moving to the back, you can see that uh, even though I've taken the pins down here, this is um, a little wobbly and there's a bit of a gap in there. I don't like it. Uh, I'm going to fix that up a little bit with some gentle heat application. Here's the most disappointing feature. I don't know if you can see it very well in this video, but the rear tail uh, is actually quite badly tweaked. Uh, you can see that it's shooting off to the uh, the starboard side, the right side there quite badly, uh, and the tip uh, is tweaked over to that side as well. So again, I'm going to give a shot of straightening it up, getting this boat nice and uh, and straight on an even keel, and we will take it from there. Just about to add a little bit of heat. This is uh, a very cheap but nonetheless effective heat gun. Just going to put a little bit of heat on this rear dorsal hatch. And what that's going to do is it's going to soften up the resin. It doesn't take much to get it to lay flat. And after it cools, uh, of course, it will harden back up again in the shape that we want it to be in. Much better. I don't know if you can see that there, but my seams are almost perfectly flat now. Everything lays nice and evenly. And because this part here is going to require both of my hands, I'm going to move on to the tail section, a little bit of heat there, and see what we can do about straightening it up. All right, we got the tail straightened up um, pretty well. You can see the upper tail in particular got straightened out nicely. It matches up with the center line of the boat. The challenge I had with this is that there seems to be metal forms on the inside here. And as such, I'm not going to mess around too much with heating up the resin. I'm worried that it'll separate from the metal. Um, this is straightened up really nicely. I'm not going to play with it too much more. I just don't want to damage it uh, at all, take that risk. So I think what I'm going to move on to here now is uh, weathering the boat from this very uniform gray color into something just a little bit more authentic. Okay, we are making some more progress here. First I'll show you the uh, little revised couch been painted just a, a flat red to kind of mimic the uh, couch that was in there before, a little bit of gold trim that should catch the lights inside the uh, model. And you can you see here the, the model has actually been coated with a rusting solution. Uh, this is something I've worked with a lot in the past. It works really, really well for a really realistic look. Um, basically, it consists of a solution of suspended iron dust, uh, a little bit of uh, suspension solution, some activator, and 11 herbs and spices. 
So what this is actually doing is it's coding the model in an actual layer of real rust. And what you end up with is a, is a beautiful coding uh, of real rust that will show a huge array of different colors ranging from a very light orange uh, in the panel areas to uh, you know deep red in some of the the pockets where the rust is collecting turns out really really well but uh, it's going to take a little bit of uh, time for it to dry and for the iron to oxidize so we're just going to leave this alone for now and come back to it in a bit you can now see that the model has been rusted and it's looking very rusty. Uh, I dare say it looks maybe a little bit too rusty, but uh, this is just a natural part uh, of this process. I am now going to take a nice soft rag, wipe it down, uh, remove some of the rust, and we'll move on to the next stage. Okay, here is uh, a bit more progress on the EFX update. The model has been wiped down with uh, the rags. You can see the, uh, the mixture of rags that I used took a lot of rust off. And particularly where I focused on was removing the rust from the centers of the panels so that it does expose some of that metallic silver paint underneath to really give that impression of a metal finish. After that it was uh, lightly dusted with some high gloss lacquer and uh, again that gives just a little bit of illusion of dampness to the hull. After that it moved on to weathering with uh, some pastels. I got some sandpaper here with various colors of pastels applied with uh, stiff bristled brush. And that weathering was applied to some of the areas where rust may have collected such as the cleats and bollards, uh, tie-down rings, uh, same areas on the back, the uh, support struts for the prop guard, uh, and of course the scuppers as well. The big thing about the, uh, the rust of course is to make things very very subtle. The uh, clear lacquer helps to really tone down the rust and highlight the areas where rust would naturally collect and that's in all of the grooves, uh, panel lines and rivets. So uh, I'm going to finish up the other side of the model here. Um, before I do that I'll show you really quickly the finished salon area. I've put the dome back on. You can see the new couch in there. turned out very, very well. I'm really happy with it.